Morning guys, thank you for joining me for Walking with the Word this morning. Today we're exploring the question of how we guard our hearts and minds from anxiety. And anxiety is a problem that I think affects all of us to one degree or another. And we're all on the journey with this. I know that I certainly am. So um, I want to um, share with you some um, ideas of how we can move forward together. And if you're watching this and you feel like you've not got time to listen through, then just um, use it as a podcast, leave it playing in the background. Because um, where we get round to the conclusion of this um, walk this morning is really profound. And I really believe it has the power to change lives positively so please stick with it and um, <clears throat> see it as a bit of a journey so I want to kind of journey through some ideas today and then kind of bring it home so um, the first thing I want to say about anxiety is actually there in Proverbs 12 25 um, <clears throat> it says anxiety weighs a man's heart down now it's a very short sentiment but I think it's surprisingly insightful anxiety weighs a man's heart down so when we um, experience too much anxiety in our lives it can weigh our hearts down and that can lead to depression, it can lead to all sorts of other problems um, as well, it can kind of lead to panic attacks, it can um, cause lack of sleep, all sorts of things can come in uh, when we have too much anxiety. So um, this idea of guarding your heart from anxiety, protecting your innermost being is really important. Um, and of course loads of different things cause us anxiety in life and um, there's anxiety from all sorts of areas it can be anxiety about jobs it can be anxiety about relationships um, it can be ang anxiety about your kind of own self-perception your um, fears of rejection it can be anxiety about things that have happened in the past or things that might happen in the future lots and lots of different things can cause us anxiety um, and um, ultimately anxiety kind of leads to the self-doubt and one of the things that can cause anxiety at the moment is a fact that society is changing so fundamentally because we live in a time of global pandemic things are constantly changing um, the government in the uk have just announced slightly releasing the lockdown um, and people are all trying to kind of um, work out what this means and um, what happens in um, any situation like this is everyone develops an opinion and um, many people begin to judge other people by their opinions and it's a time where um, we feel like there's a lot of judgments and opinions being bounded around and, and that can leave you feeling a lot of self-doubt you feel like you're on this ocean of um, waves which are bashing you around in every direction in fact that's a biblical illustration in James it says that when we doubt we're like a, a wave tossed around by the wind and you picture this wind bashing this wave in different directions and there's a sort of unpredictability and uncertainty a chaos a disorder to this um, system to this ocean where you're being bounced around by these these waves so if you've been on a, a a stormy ocean if you've been on a boat when it's um, the waves are being bounced around you'll know what this feels like it doesn't feel very nice it feels very unsettling and <clears throat> I think society can feel like that at times when everyone's got an opinion everyone's got a judgment um, and sometimes um, we don't even need to um, have a, a direct judgment of us to feel judged sometimes um, judgmentality is just something that you feel because of the way people are posting the way people are talking it might even just be newspaper articles online that are shaming people calling people covid idiots all that kind of stuff and you're constantly thinking am i one of them am i a covid idiot should i do this shouldn't i do this and second guessing yourself and you find yourself on the sea of doubt being bashed around by these waves in every direction and um, I think that can lead to such anxiety and that's kind of the anxiety I want to talk about today because I think it's so relevant to so many of us, this chaotic world of opinions that we live in. <clears throat> and when you live on an ocean of anxiety like this, um, I think there's a few things that you can try and do. <clears throat> one of them is just to escape the ocean entirely and you do get people that will try and do this what they'll do is they'll um, escape the ocean by basically saying i don't care about this society anymore i don't care about people i'm just going to live for myself as long as i'm consistent with myself i'll be all right it just doesn't matter what people say and actually um, i think some people do successfully escape the anxiety of um, being kicked around by waves um, but I'm not necessarily sure this is the wise attitude just completely shutting everyone out and not caring about anyone's opinions whatsoever um, it's certainly not biblical in Proverbs it says that victory is found in the midst of counsel and um, so Proverbs is saying that when we surround ourselves by counsellors people who are wise and can give us advice and we ask them and we bring our ideas to them we can 
um, find victory within that um, and I think that's quite important where social beings were made to live in society and in relationships um, and we're not called to leave the ocean completely there is a sense in which we're meant to be present in this in this chaotic system but we're meant to be stability we're not meant to be bounced around by it and this is what's so difficult so what we really need is more of an anchor we need something that grounds us and keeps us in a, in a position it reminds us that there is such a thing as stable solid ground um, but it stops us from being just bounced around and going on some kind of chaotic journey across this ocean of opinion so how do we do that what's that ground and what's that anchor that, that will ground us and and help us stay steady um, especially in such a crazy time. Well, I think um, the Apostle Paul gives us a clue in Philippians 4 verse 7. He says, um, be anxious for nothing. So there you go, you've got anxiety. Um, remember in Proverbs it said, anxiety weighs a man's heart down. Be anxious for nothing, but in all things, with prayer, supplication and thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses understanding, that transcends understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. So this verse pulls all these ideas together. And um, we started by talking about anxiety and um, how anxiety weighs our hearts down. And then in this verse, Paul is saying, don't be anxious for anything, but receive the peace of God and guard your heart. So it's all kind of coming together in this beautiful verse. Um, and the key feature here is prayer. So um, there's different types of prayer that come across here. He talks about prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. And we're going to unpack this and explore what these different things mean in our lives. Um, but before we do that, I want to share a quote from um, Gandhi. Uh, I know I'm walking with the word and it probably seems strange to quote Gandhi. But actually, um, I think embrace truth where you find it. And Gandhi was so wise and had so much good to say. Um, and one of the things he said, I think, um, is amazing. And I think it's a very important lesson. Is he says, when you're thoughts, your words and your actions align, you'll find peace. And I think there's a, a real ring of truth in this, but I don't think it's the entire truth. I think that's a big part of it. And a lot of us um, do um, struggle with this. I know I certainly do struggle to keep my thoughts and my words and my actions in line with each other. And I know that when they fall out of line, I do lack peace. Um, but I think it goes a step further because you could imagine, for example, a serial killer, right? So a serial killer starts to think about going out and murdering a lot of people then he says he'll do it, and then he acts it out. Will that bring him peace? Well, obviously not. That's not a way to have a peaceful life. That's going to be quite a traumatic existence. It's going to bring trouble into his life. So um, it's not just about having an internal consistency with our thoughts, our, our, our words and our actions. It's about bringing them into line with something outside ourselves, something greater than ourselves, something that will ground us in a rocky ocean of opinions. It's about bringing our thoughts, our words and our actions into line with God. God is a consistent, God is a stability, God is the anchor in this time. And this is what I think Paul is getting into in Philippians. Um, and how do we do that? Well, it seems to happen through prayer and um, there's different types of prayer in the Bible or um, at least there's different aspects to prayer there's different things that prayer does so Paul mentions a few of them here there's thanksgiving there's supplication which is asking for things um, but there's also um, praying in, in the way Jesus taught us when we sort of pray let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven there's a sort of prayer that seeks guidance and seeks God's will so um, I want to look today at prayer as a, an act of alignment so of course prayer is powerful when we ask God for things he acts he changes the world and prayer is amazing in that way but prayer is also about bringing ourselves into alignment not just internally not just with our own thoughts and words and actions but bringing all of those things into alignment with something external to ourselves something greater it's about bringing all of those things into alignment with God praying into his will and finding stability in this rocky chaotic ocean of anxiety so um how do we do this? Well, I think it starts when we pray, uh, bringing our hearts before God and praying for his will. So I think this, this action starts with our hearts, the very thing we're trying to guard. And as our hearts get anchored and rooted to God, then our thoughts and our words and our actions will follow suit. And anything that's not of God will just drop away and everything will just become stable. Now, that's not to say that the one time you pray and the one time you do this, you'll never know anxiety. And it's not to say that you won't feel rocked around from time to time. 
what this will do if we if we follow this advice about praying and bringing ourselves into a line is it'll give us that anchor that we can keep attaching ourselves to so when we do feel like we're getting swamped when we do feel judged when we do feel that we're being bounded around by these opinions and we feel unsettled inside just take a moment and stop and pray and invite god into it and say god i'm being bounced around again i need to just reattach myself to this anchor for a moment and remind myself that there's something greater out there there's something that will ground me there's a, a greater truth and there's something that this society needs and if we do this not only do we stabilize our own lives in this storm of anxiety in this storm of chaotic opinions we also become what jesus called salt and light we become people who can help other people people who can become a place of stability picture this boat grounded and anchored it's not being rocked around on this crazy chaotic journey across an ocean of anxiety what are the other boats going to want to do they're going to want to come and join. They're going to come and want to find some of that stability too. They're going to want to get their people onto your boat just to take rest. And you'll become a place of rest and peace for people. So um, this is so important. Not only does this have the power to change our own lives, this stuff has the power to change other people's lives too. I want to finish by praying. Father, um, we live in a chaotic time. We live in an ocean of anxiety. And I just... Um, ask that um, you would help ground us you give us that anchor through prayer through submitting to you through worshiping you lord hold us stably help our lives and um, become the type of lives that people want to be um, close to and attached to and find rest with and in lord um, help us to be boats that are anchored in a storm of chaotic opinions help us to live in your word and by your word help us to understand more deeply your truth father um, and thank you that you don't judge us thank you that you accept us as we are and you hold us firm you hold us steady thank you that in your word you've revealed principles that we can live by truths that we can apply to our lives and help us to understand how to discern and interpret those truths and to, to apply them in this this chaotic world lord help us to be salt and light in jesus name amen guys thank you for um tuning in this morning it's just been um such a blessing to be able to share with you guys like this um just walking each morning um because for me it's just encouraged me to go out and seek god and say god what what do you want me to share tomorrow um, and it's just been such a blessing to have that in our family my wife emma has just been such a rock and an inspiration in that so um, every day um, she'll just ask me she'll say what do you think thinking about talking about tomorrow and um, she'll pray and she'll just um, give me wise ideas and um, just help me shape up um, what I'm sharing so this isn't just from me this is from our family um, we love you guys um, we just want to be a blessing in a, a crazy time um, so we're putting these videos out every morning do join me each morning if you want a notification of when the videos are being released um, click um, click subscribe and that'll just remind you that the videos are there um, and just thank you for joining this journey and I'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. God bless you. Stay safe and have a good day.